Hello YouTube and welcome to our 8th to 5th unit 3D tutorial. So jumping straight in, today we're going to make it so when we shoot one of the enemies, they, pr well, die basically. We have done this before by actually shooting them, but all that happens is they either stand there and you can push them around by shooting them, or they disappear, which isn't very good. So what we want to do is we'll want to make it so they either flop around or they fly back, um, slam into the floor, something like that. So, um, there are many ways we can do this. We can animate it, we can script it, we can use ragdoll effects, and we'll be getting into each of them eventually, but for now we're just going to use animation. So just to show basically how it will work. S the same principles will go for all the rest, but um, I think ragdoll will be coming up shortly, I'm not sure. But animations for today. So what we're going to do is find our NPC. I was talking to this one here and he says he will be willing to die for our game very generous person I don't think he had a choice in it either way but so we'll drag him away and put him here we'll rename this one to death test 2 and we, we call him death test because we're testing the death animation and we call him 2 because if I show you if we were to put an animation on him he'd die right here we all know that because we use in position but if we were to move him say over here he jump back here and die here because these coordinates were said to animate him at minus two three nine x and if we move him over there that's not minus okay that is minus two three nine x but that one won't do it at minus two three nine x it'll have to jump back so the only way we can fix that is if we create a, an empty parent object and call this death test one you may have noticed if you put something inside of a parent their axis changes completely so now we have 2 not minus 239 so if we were to animate him here if we move this parent over here his axis stays the exact same so we can animate him anywhere in the world and put him anywhere in the world completely differently and he'll stay inside the parent so the reason I've named it 1 and 2 is when I'm explaining so I can say like so now we want to put an animation on death test 2 you can't put an animation on death test 1 so instead of calling them both death test you won't understand so it's really simple so what we're going to do first is open up our amazing animator window not animator, animation because everybody knows I love doing that so let's bring it here and what we're going to do is first we'll do it onto our actual main test 2 death test 2 character so don't add it to death test 1 else it won't work because that's using world coordinates this is using local coordinates so use death test 2 click the little blank box and click create new clip add the component all it's wanted to do is add an animation component to it and we'll call this death 1 because we're going to have loads of different ones and make them randomize eventually so we've got our animation so let's play it well it doesn't do nothing so we need to animate it obviously but before we do, we're going to untick play automatically, so it's not going to sit playing by itself, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do is first, I'm going to make it so he falls down to the floor using the position. So we know, all know how to do this if you've watched my tutorials before. Click the record button, move him a tiny bit to create a keyframe, and then go to three. Should do. In fact, I'm going to do it to two so he dies quickly, and we'll bring him down to the floor. That should do. Ah, let's see. Great, so he falls. That's what we needed. So now, um, say we hit him in the chest, he'll go kaboom and slowly fall down. So what's next? Well, we need to rotate him. So go back to our rotation tool. Do a little bit of rotation just so we've got the components here. And now when we get to page part two, which is this one here, we can rotate him like so. So now he'll go Ugh. Ooh. yeah. Obviously we could like make it better by lifting his feet up off the floor so if we take local and just bring him up off the floor so he's not intersecting with the floor because then it won't look as good. Boof. So he's dead. He's Frankenstein dead. We all know that. Right. So what's next? Shall we animate his legs? So kick his leg, in fact we'll start with his arms, we'll animate his arms up so find his 
spine, spine, spine. Um, if you haven't got a rigged model like this, you won't have one of this, so you can't really do this. You have to have a rigged model. The hero machine I've gave from previous tutorials, you can go and get that, or you can just use any model what's actually got bones. If it's got bones, it'll have something called bip or bones, biped. I've seen it called skeleton before. You just look for these, and it should have an army of these files. If not, um, it's very hard to rig, so don't attempt it. But yeah, so we're gonna create a new animation. Well, record again. We'll just we're not gonna move it because there's no point. And we're gonna go to page two, and we'll make his arm go. I don't know. Let's see. So his original arm position, well his end arm position. I want it to be there, so he's like fell on floor. So it doesn't just go like that. So maybe at point five or half a second, we'll make his arm lift up. Then at one second, we'll make it come out to the front and down. Sorry about that airplane. And um, one point five seconds, we'll make it fly back and then boom so kaboom. so I don't know why he decides to rotate his arm but it looks funny yeah that'll do I was originally going for he puts his arms out forward like coming round but that didn't work so we're gonna go to the other arm and we'll actually see if we can attempt this one correctly so his arm stays there at the end his arm is in fact I want his arm to be on top of him so it's fell on top of him. So there, and all we can do is rotate the other one at the end. But halfway through, I want his arm to be out forward. Like, no, you shot me, kind of thing. So, poof, boom. Did that work? And that'll last till there. Uh, poof. So that seems perfect. Uh, we'll rotate his inner arm like we said we wanted to which I believe is this one so rotate it a little bit come up to number two zoom in and rotate it that'll do so he falls and lands on himself No. that'll do so what about his legs let's animate a bit of his legs so close all the spine and we'll go into the thighs. And uh, which one we got? Ooh, we got his knee. So we just edit the bare thighs and then. So rotate it a little bit and let's go to number two. Let's, let's a bit like that, yeah that'll do. And where's it gonna go from oh dear. As you can see this yellow one's overlapped, so what we're gonna do is just drag it down. Till it looks it's like it's in the right position. There, let's try it again. That's the only problem with Unity's animator is 3ds Maxes don't do that. And apparently we didn't move the legs, so let's move it out more. It's desperate wanting to go up there. Let's not put it up there. Let's just keep it how it is. Because it's going to make him spin his leg. So, he falls down. What do we want him to do with his leg? Well, we could make his leg slip up. So, whoops. Poof. Take it to about a second. Oof. Boom. It would explain why he's throwing his arms around. So we go to the next thigh, rotate, and the end position. And the reason I'm doing the beginning straight to the end, then to the middle, is because if we know where he starts and then we know where he ends, it was called microscoping or something. I learned about it in college. But you start with the beginning and then the end, and then you can just like fold in on it and see, get to the middle because then you know what your ending is, you know what your start is down the middle, you just make up so it's a lot easier so this one I want to be there, see this one's working fine Ugh. but I want this to be rotated yeah, let's rotate it so he snapped his leg, kind of Okay, that one's fine, but let's go in and rotate his knee, because I want to rotate his knee. So, this one, about there. His, he folds his leg, so it looks like... Ugh. 
but his leg doesn't stay like that because then it looks weird. So we're gonna push it back down, like so, and then we'll. He decides to kick out, but then he decides no, that's not a good idea. I'll put my leg back down. So he puts his leg back down. So let's have a look. Let's go to uh, this view and click play. Boom. So I think that'll do. So we'll save it and close this animation panel. So if we go back to our death test 2, you can see it's been saved. If we were to just paste that here and click play automatically and click play, he'd just do it automatically. Fire. Boosh. And then he falls down. It's okay, but it's not... Well, we want to shoot him. Which is really simple. We've done this before. So we'll take play automatically and we'll look for enemy colliders, which is here. So put that on death test 2. Yeah, it'll be better on death test 2. But on death test... Yeah, death test 2 again, we'll place a box collider there. The actual movement script will place on death test 1 when we get it. But So let's just boop, bump a piece that. And I can't remember if he needs to be a trigger on collision stay. So no, he needs to be a box collider. So no trigger. So we've got him there. Uh, we'll just boop beef out the x-axis just so he don't fall over and the z-axis there we go so we shoot him and he'll fall over um, the box collider will stay where it is when he animates you it don't really matter because we can just turn it into a trigger when he's dead but yeah so we've got that an enemy hit we don't have an enemy hit but what we need to do is make it play the animation when we actually when he's dead so if we read our animation if he's hit by the fireball clone which is us or the hadouken clone take his life down then destroy him well that's not what we want well that's destroy the collider sorry that's the bullet yeah so here if the enemy's life is less than one destroy it well that's not what we really want either so what we're gonna do is just note out this in fact we'll just change this update to lowercase so it never calls this and then here we'll type this dot animation dot play and we'll type death one I can't remember if I think that's meant to be in speech marks so if my conclusion is right when he gets hit once his animation in fact let's copy this paste it in here if his life is less than one then he should play the death one animation which is dying but what we can also do is we'll type this dot collider dot is trigger equals true. So as soon as he's dead, his trigger will turn on so you can't hit him again because you don't want to keep hitting him. So animation is not a part of enemy collisions. So this dot game object dot animation. So let's try again. Because it, it was trying to use the actual script. Did you mean animation? I probably did mean animation. That's because I haven't done animation for quite a while. But there we go. So um, this dot game object. So act, get the game object which this is attached to. You don't actually have to put this. You can just put game object to work the same. Dot animation. Dot play. We've done that before. Just play an animation. And then in speech marks, put your animation name, and it'll search for the ones attached to it in the animation panel and use it. This dot collider equals trigger is true. We'll turn in his trigger to true when you shoot it so you can't kill it. So if we watch this, uh, this is going to be difficult because I can't see character there. Loses health. Health again. So this next shot should knock him over and kill him. Play. Perfect. And there's a trigger too. So not the best in the world because it was very very slow and people tend to die quicker than that unless you have slow motion but yeah so just to prove we can attach that to any single character if we go to in fact we'll just duplicate him and move him across here then forward so we can get close to him we'll call this death test 2 so the outside is 2 and we'll play again and it shouldn't jump. So, excuse me if this is loud, it's actually quite loud for me, but... 
And just to prove he doesn't jump if we shoot this one. Perfect, we can now go around slaughtering innocent people. Which is good for our game, not in real life. Don't do it, kids. But yeah, so, we can now... This sounds really bad, but we can now kill people in our game. Really good, but bad at the same time. But yeah, so, next tutorial we we'll may look at Ragdoll. We may do another animation, because actually I had fun doing this type of animation. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, I'll put the animations into the de the hero machine, because why not? And see you next time. Um, also join the Facebook group below, I'll put new information when I get enough followers, but yeah. So see you later.